Super Talk Mississippi Media Production. You're listening to Thunder and Lightning on Super Talk Mississippi. Covering Mississippi State sports like nobody else. With Sports Talk Mississippi's Brian Haydad and Robbie Falk of On3 Sports. Now get ready for Thunder and Lightning. This is Thunder and Lightning here on Super Talk Mississippi. Brian Haydad and Robbie Falk here with you on a Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining us at supertalk.fm or wherever it is that you get podcasts from. We appreciate you guys out there, our great listeners, especially our servicemen and women out there taking care of us. I want to thank our sponsors over at Strange Brew Coffee House and Churn and Spoon Ice Cream. Start your day the right way with a trip to the drive thru over at Strange Brew Coffee House here in Starkville or at Brupolo over in Tupelo. It'd be a little weird, Robbie, if Brupolo was in El Dorado. That would be a little weird. That doesn't, that doesn't sound very Mississippi. So it's near my hometown. Really? It's in Warren County. Colorado. There you go. Wasn't, wasn't that like a like a city of gold yes, or something? Yes, like that is correct. Ancient. Yes, that's what uh, Mayan. I think that's what Hernando de Soto was looking for. I think that's correct. Or maybe Coronado. Coronado sure. was looking for it, yeah. Sure. Wherever you are in our great state, you can enjoy Strange Brew Coffee each and every morning. It's just a click away at strangebrewcoffeehouse.com. College Corner, collegecornerstore.com is the place to find the maroon and white merchandise that you are looking for, and you certainly are going to be looking for it. So how do you look for it? You go to College Corner. Two locations to serve you in the Jackson area, originally by Fleet Feet, flow by the Half Shell. Shop online, collegecornerstore.com. If you need new gear, if you need the new logos, they've got them at College Corner. Restaurant Tyler, Starville's flagship restaurant for lunch, dinner, or Sunday brunch. The best meal in town is at Restaurant Tyler. Whatever you're, you're, if you're trying to have a special occasion, but you're like, what are we going to do? Restaurant Tyler can be your special occasion. A date to restu- at Restaurant Tyler, a dinner at Restaurant Tyler, that's a great special occasion. Just make one up. Happy whatever day. Let's go to Restaurant Tyler. I would do it. So should you. For the best meal in town, it's easy to find. It's always at Restaurant Tyler. Priority One Bank, 16 locations to serve you throughout central Mississippi. Let Priority One Bank, what? What's the matter over there? You all right? Okay. You okay? We're okay? No. Oh, no. Kevontae Henry just flipped to Bama. <laughs> going to be a going to be a long uh, couple years here here in Starville. Well, I've lost my desire to talk good about Priority One Bank, but I'll do it anyway. Priority One Bank, 16 locations to serve you out throughout central Mississippi. Let PriorityOneBank.com be your guide to not only show you where those locations are, but to show you how they're going to help you invest, how they're going to help you manage your money, how they're going to help you plan for the future. Now more than ever, it's important to be able to talk to people about your money directly. You can do that at Priority One Bank. Let Priority One Bank make you their priority. Hayes Fawcett got no problem making those graphics when people flip from Mississippi State. No comment. That's a tough, 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 tough blow for Mississippi State. Well, I mean, th- this is the issue: is like you're showing progress, like you're you're. Like but it's still you, you, Alabama. It, but it, but the thing is, like you have to make some headway on the defensive side of the ball in this recruiting class. You went out and you evaluated this guy. Absolutely no one was even looking at him. Mm-hmm. Like, you found him, and he's, like, tucked away in California. And Alabama comes in and is like, eh, sure, we'll take you. Boom, you lose him. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the problem is, like, you, like you're making headway, but the defense is the is the part is of the, the ball issue. that's got to have the massive changes. This guy was going to be a huge part of it. They're going to have to spend – I mean, I, we're already you hearing have to spend it. like eight million on defense. You're, you're already, well, now you say that, Robbie. The number I keep hearing is is between twelve and fifteen million, right? So that being said, ten million of that, maybe twelve million, needs to go to defense. Offensively, you really could go for getting a good a couple good offensive linemen. But I think you can feel pretty good with the quarterbacks you have. You need to find a quarterback who's willing to come in and compete for a starting job. But you don't need, you don't need to go out and find a starting quarterback, if that makes sense. You could use another receiver, but, I mean, you might just be okay there. you you gotta, you got you to gotta drop money into this defense. I can't, yeah. And that's, that's a tough blow for Mississippi State. Not the way to start the, uh, the show off, but that is, that is a very big blow for the Bulldogs. 
to lose Cavante here. Yeah. That's a guy who who was going who would have been a day one starter for you on this defense. Yeah, for next no, season, no, so. it would have been a big would have been a big help. Yeah. It's thunder and lightning. <laughs> Welcome in, Robbie Falk over there, Brian Adad. Uh Just back from Jeff Levy's press conference. Um, Twelve minutes, in case you were wondering today. So a little longer than usual. We had a few. More, we had a few more questions. Again, I feel like it's important to note that when we talk about how quickly these press conferences are over, he's answering all our questions. Yeah, they're not cutting us off. They're saying, you know, hey, you have any more questions? We're just out of questions at that. I point. feel like today was the only time where, like, Brandon's been like, all right, last question. Yeah, like that. Like I think he's everybody's gotten accustomed to it being like eight minutes. Yeah. It went over 12 10, minutes. Like, Whoa, this, yeah, what's going this on? thing's rolling too long. So You got the Lanier question in. Were you happy with his answer? I did not get the Lanier question in. Oh, sorry. John got it in, didn't he? Yes. I thought you, I, my bad. My bad. Were you happy with his answer? That's a, that's about what I expected. Yeah. To not you get know, the specifics, but we did have a talk about it kind of thing. Yes. And, uh, you know, I think that's that's kind of – and Xavion Hardy is, is going to Florida this weekend. All right. That's great. Um, uh, so, anyways – um, I I just I don't think there's anything else that he could have said right there that would have, you know, appeased. I don't think he's going to come out and say, "Yeah, it was a boneheaded play." Yeah, he's lying about his concussion. He does not have a concussion, um, or anything like that. Like I, and I I do think that there was like, there was a situation where they're on the sidelines, and I think, you know, the trainers and stuff were talking about it, and that he didn't seem like he was all there. Mm-hmm. After that, like I think that there, there certainly is probably something to that. Like it was a mild concussion, but it appears that he's okay. He's going to play this weekend, so it's nothing serious, right? But basically, w- what he said was, "Yeah, we talked about it, had a conversation. He's going to help us out this year. We we told him don't don't listen to the outside noise, things like that. Mm-hmm. I don't think they were they were really uh, thrilled with his statement he put out there, but that's why it got deleted." But I think the message was him to, was to him was to uh, don't listen to the criticism or whatever. Just when need you to play hard and do your do your job. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I said you you weren't you weren't going to get him publicly chastising a player right. at today's press conference. You were just going to kind of get what you got from him, uh, and so you move forward with that. Um, also from Levy, you know, uh, talked about he talked about the 2014 team reunion uh, this weekend. Said he wasn't sure about Dak. I think that's uh, pretty obvious that the, the the scheduling was done to get Dak to get Dak here. And you don't have a 2014 reunion without Dak Prescott, right? Just, and so my guess is State is planning some big announcement, a big video, something, and he just didn't want to spill the beans on that. I will be for sure to completely shocked if Dak Prescott and Dan Mullen are not both on the field this weekend. And let's see here. Probably won't have any Chris Jones. Yeah, He's Jones. The, the Chiefs have a game. He won't. Is there be anybody here. else that's on that fourteen team? That's just that's in the NFL right now. Uh, that was before Jeffrey Simmons. Yeah, Simmons isn't on that team. Uh, McKinney's not in the NFL anymore. Darius Slay was not. On Slay's that not team. on that team. Um, I'm trying to think of offensive linemen, but there there weren't any. Gabe no. Jackson's. Out He's not of the on the team. He's not on that team. Gabe Jackson right. senior year was 13. 2013. Yeah. 13 was his last year. Um, yeah. Chris Jones is the only big name. So you won't have Chris Jones and that's it. Yeah. You'll have everybody else there. Surely they'll, they probably got like a video yeah. done with Chris Jones and he's like, hey, state fans, I wish I could be there this weekend and see my boys. Yeah. But, you know, want to give thank you how much I love y'all, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be exciting to see a lot of those players because like that, that's at the beginning of whenever I started covering the same. I started covering them in 2013. So mm-hmm. I, like, I saw a lot of those guys kind of develop early on in their careers, and then mm-hmm. that, that team was just so fun to cover. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be that's gonna be really fun. That's going to be exciting. I'm pretty pumped about it. Um, Dan Mullen has mentioned he's coming back. Mm-hmm. So it'll be the first time Mullen's been here since the Florida game, as far as, you know, at a game, uh, the Florida game in 2018. Mm-hmm. So it should be pretty cool, man. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, it should, it should be. I, I just – and the people who did this aren't here anymore, so I can't. I'm not trying to say, but like, I, I still remember that 20, uh, 2021, the baseball 
and the way they rushed through it and how it was just it was pathetic. It was yeah. pathetic the way they handled that. Yeah. I this needs to be done in such a way that there is no limit on time and that you know everybody gets introduced and that you know you're not well, you're not flying to the end and Dak Prescott and then calling it a day. Well, know? last year they had the opportunity to rectify that and they did the the 25 anniversary of 98 team. Yeah. And they, they came out of job. the tunnel like that Oh that's, my God, Dak coming out of the tunnel with Dan Mullen, I, I yeah. might shed a tear. Yeah, that's that that has a, that that has a lot of potential. They have a that lot needs of, to happen. What's really cool is like they are they are the first team to play inside that renovated Davis Wade Stadium. Yeah, yeah. So like you know the twenty five the the twenty five year anniversary the ninety eight team. The, the place is totally different, but this kind of feel like you can kind of put them back at the scene. Exactly. You know, you, you, you can kind of picture Dak Prescott pointing to the sky, running to the end zone, yes. things like that. Like, you, you kind of get back into the M- scene Mullen of Mullen coming out with Dak, Dylan Day, but Ardrick McKinney, Ben Beckwith behind him. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Preston, no, Preston Smith is another one that probably Preston won't Smith be there. won't be there. Are, are the commanders off? No, he plays the Packers. the Packers. Let's see. Packers by week. It's week ten. So they no. played this week yeah, play at this home week. against the Texans. So he won't. Be he won't be there. there. So that's okay. That's okay. But it's basically just Preston Smith and Chris Jones. Yeah. So two key players. Don't get me wrong. But, yeah. But yeah, that's 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 gonna be really really cool. And then, oh hey, we got a, we got a delivery here. Come on in here. Thank you, ma'am. This is not a light blue. Well, I'm sorry. Just whatever the chair there. What, whatever works. We. We'll, Thank you, ma'am. We're we're just excited. Those of you who are wondering what just happened, my daughter Aislinn just brought us uh, brought me something. You'll see it. You will have seen it on yesterday's us. Uh, yeah, the, the, the great thing about it is it's already happened. It's already happened. So very sweet of her to help her dad out like that. Continue, continue uh, agging it on. I will. I will. Um, and then let's talk about the sign. I saw the sign is brought to you by. Pip Printing and Signs, who want to remind you that they have reliable service for every business need. What does that mean? It means whatever you're, the message of your business is, Pip Printing and Signs can help you tell it, can help you get customers in the door, and help keep you those customers coming in time after time. Whatever it is you need from a printing service, Pip Printing and Signs provides the top of the line of it. And don't forget, if you're a Mississippi State fan, 10% of your sale with Pip Printing and Signs goes directly to the Bulldog Initiative. You are helping out Mississippi State by spending the exact same amount of money you spend right now. If you're a business owner, you spend money on printing. I saw the sign. It's brought to you by Pitt Printing and Signs. Call Cam Baker at 601-499-5216. He just ties into what we were just talking about. He was asked about recruiting today. And said, you know, it's about showing them we have a plan for the future, and 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 it's about, you know, I've never been more convicted. I think he said about where we're going and what we're doing. The recruiting piece of this is such a, a difficult one for Mississippi State right now. Now, here's the truth: State could be four and two right this second. They could be five and one. They could even be six and zero. Oh. And if Alabama wants one of your recruits, it's going to be really, really tough to keep them. So I'm not overly, you know. Plus, I guess I should say about this. Mario it's like Matt, it's like you know, it's one of those deals where just like you just kind of shake your head and what are you going to do? Right. You know, like how how do you combat dealing with Alabama? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, other than you, you you just have to pay a lot more money. You're just not going to win those battles head to head. I mean, you might every now and then you you might get a Jeffrey Simmons. Type recruitment, but a head-to-head battle with Alabama is not going to go Mississippi State's way most of the time. Yeah. So you know it, it's frustrating. It, it's like, what do you do? But like, I have a hard time blaming someone for it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess that they could be. I guess, I guess the defense could be better, and you could be selling a better, you know, vision to Kevante Henry, but. At the same time, like, I mean, is that really going to matter? It, it doesn't really matter sometimes when it's out. Of, we, 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 look, like I said, I'm more upset that State lost Mario Nash to Florida State. Right? Yes. Florida State is not a good program right now. They're in they're in a they're in a bad spot. Uh, that's one that, that you know that's a Mississippi kid. I, I that I that I, is from, this is something different. I know that State had a great connection with this Kevante Henry kid because he he played at Oklahoma before he went down to JUCO. Lebby knew him personally. They had the good relationship. 
But at the end of the day, sometimes it's just Alabama. And whether you want to hear that or not, it is, it is literally the truth of the matter. Mm-hmm. And so the problem is, and, and we talked about it last week with this Nash thing, is that the vicious circle that exists. And that's, well, Levy can't do anything until he gets better players, but he can't get better players until he does something. And so it, it's, it's just going to be an incredibly difficult task to get some guys in here. They're going to have to spend a lot of money. We've talked about that. They've got that money to spend, thankfully. And I think that, you know, something we've talked about is, you know, the portal recruiting, it starts now. It's, it's not just, it's not one of those things where, all right, it's December 1st, you know. Yeah, I, I, you've played the, the, the game, right? They don't let you do transfer portal during the season. It's only after all the games have been played that you can start to access the transfer portal in the video game. Here in real life, that access is happening now. Phone calls are being made, people are being reached out to, and you're finding things out. So, you know, you should be in better position. The, the, the term I've heard used a lot is ground game. You, you didn't have any ground game last year. This year you feel like you're ahead of that, that curve a little bit. Yeah. But they're, like you said, Robbie, they're going to have to get – I mean, they need 15 to 18 quality guys on defense. They, never mind a starting lineup. They need, they need five or six depth pieces as well. And when I say depth pieces, I don't mean them like people were talking about Sullivan Kapaka, saying he can be a depth piece. In other words, he's not good enough to start. We're talking about a depth piece in terms of he's good enough to start, he just got beaten out. I just don't think that – I mean, I, like I, I don't ever advocate for coaches losing their job or anything like that. I, I just really don't believe that you can move forward with your current defensive staff because you can't sell it. Yeah. That that's the problem. It, it's the the production on the field is one thing. You you've got to be able to recruit this year. You got to be able to, and they did a good job. Like get, getting Kevonte Henry on board was a big deal when he when it happened. Getting Xavion Hardy on board that's a big deal. But people are using what they have right now against them. They give up six hundred yards against Georgia. They give up five hundred twenty two yards against Texas. They've given up almost 80 points in the last two ball games. I, there, you got to have some notoriety within the staff. Jeff Lebby has that. On offense, Jeff Lebby can sell what he's produced offensively. Coleman Hutzler has nothing to sell right now. Mm-hmm. He's done nothing as a defensive coordinator. And, I, and he's, he's working hard. He's recruiting hard. I get all that, but at the end of the day, you don't have time to let a guy get used to this job, you know, in the like being thrown in the fire. Like you, you just don't have time to do that. I, it, it's almost like state has got to make a decision on this like quickly after the season to be able to pull the talent they want to pull. Because if you can't keep the guys recruited, or that you, that you've recruited, if you can't keep them committed, mm-hmm. how are you going to be able to convince guys in the transfer portal? that are going to be recruited by teams like this cuz that's the guys that you're going to have to go after. You can't you can't go after guys that are under the radar prospects in the transfer portal or uh that are, you know, you're competing against group of 5 teams. You got to get impact players in here. And to do that, you're going to have to compete against the Alabamas and the Georgias and LSUs of the world. So I I just uh I don't know. It's a tough pill to swallow, and it's going to be a very tough job for Jeff Levy and company to get things turned around here uh, until they can they can get some real difference makers on that side of the ball. They've got difference makers on the offensive side of the ball. Craver, Coleman, Van Buren can be difference makers for you. I think Stonk and Burnside can be when you get there, um, but defensively you don't have any right now. You don't have. I mean, I like Isaac Smith. He's a good player, but he's not a difference maker. No, and so. He, he's he's a really good player. He's a guy that's going to be really consistent for you, but it's not a I, – I don't know if he's going to be like an all-SEC no. during his time here, and I think that he's easily State's best player, and he's going to have a great career at Mississippi State. But he's going to be looked at the same way that uh, that Buki Watson and, and Jet Johnson were, which yeah. they – Buki eventually became all-SEC guy. But that that's how they're going to look at him. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you gotta. That that's what sucks about this is the the people that you're losing mm-hmm. are the people that you need. You have to have a Mario Nash type. You have to have a Kevonte Henry type. That guy was a difference maker for you. You're you're gonna you're about to lose um, the kid from Georgia. 
my mind just went but Stephen Miller. Yeah. Um, you're about to lose him. He is your best safety prospect in this class. You're about to lose Austin Howard, who's a linebacker. You're losing guys that you don't need to lose. Yeah. Um, and it, it's all like, you know, some different circumstances, stuff like that. But that's, you know, part of the deal was you got him locked in in the summer. You It's, a, it's something to build on in this recruiting class. And now you're going to have to go back to the drawing board on some of these guys. And I don't know – I haven't seen the guys that are going to replace them. That that's kind of the issue. So it, that's a big hit for you. But yeah, like that. It just really. I gotta be careful what I say, but like the all the all of the uh, the coverage that these decommitments get, mm-hmm. and these people were nowhere to be found. Well, I'll when, say it for you. You want me to say it? Sure. It's yeah. ridiculous. It's ridiculous that Mario Nash commits to Mississippi State and there's no on three national presence of it. But as soon as he, he de- not even before he flipped to Florida State, when he decommitted, there was on three national presence. Cavante Henry commits, commits to Mississippi State, literally nothing. The only articles you're going to find on that commitment are written by Paul or Robbie. But as soon as he decommits and flips to Alabama, we've got a graphic from the national guy and there's national stories. And so. Some of what, I'm not one of these guys like the media is biased against Mississippi State. The media is biased towards big brands. Yeah, Alabama, Florida State, those are bigger brands than Mississippi State. But it, when you have a company that's going to try to put websites out for everybody, you have to cover everybody equally. You just have to. Yeah. You know, if you want to, you know. Whether you like it or not. Whether you, you like it or you not. Have, so you yeah. have to keep it. And I it's, think Chad Simmons does a great job of that good. for us. Yeah. Um, and I appreciate all the work that he puts in. He actually goes on the road, sees kids, and he's sharing information, good or bad, with our members all the time, and I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. All right, let's move into the rest of the show and our SEC picks. That's brought to you by our friends over at the Mississippi Beef Council who want to remind you that beef, it is what's for dinner. If you're cooking out this weekend, nothing beats the sizzle of beef on the grill. If you're not cooking out, nothing beats going to a great steakhouse and letting them cook it up for you. So whatever choice you make, make sure the choice is beef. And then, well, wait, 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 we got a home game this weekend. That means, you know, probably if you're tailgating, 3 o'clock kickoff, don't have time to do the big cuts. But, man, you tell me that we're going to have some steaks to tailgate this weekend, everybody is going to be a happy camper. Enjoy beef this weekend. Beef, it's what's for dinner, thanks to our friends at the Mississippi Beef Council. Two Brothers Smoked Meats in the heart of the Cotton District is the place to find the smoked southern soul food that you are looking for. And you certainly are going to be looking for it. This weekend's home football game, Two Brothers is a great place to go on a Friday night. On a Saturday before the game, easy walk over to Davis Wade Stadium. Just such great food, great atmosphere. The weather outside is fantastic. Robbie and I went to lunch today. We sat outside, which means the the patio seating at uh, Two Brothers is going to be a fantastic choice for you. Or if you want to do something a little different, why not grab a fancy sandwich over at the Older Brother? Starkville's best new restaurant. Go check them out if you have not already. We love it there. We love the Older Brother. We love Two Brothers Smoked Meats. Great products, great service. Every business likes to promise it to you. They deliver it to you at Advantage Business Systems. They've been doing it for 50 years. 50. 50. When you need technology... For your business, give them a call. And then if you need service, it's the same number. It's not a 1-800 number. It's not on hold for 45 minutes. It's not an out-of-state technician making an appointment. Maybe he'll be there in a week to 10 days. It's simple, easy service from Advantage Business Systems. 601-362-9192 or visit them online at absms.com. Find out how Advantage Business Systems will help your business do business. Before you go to the games this fall, you need to head over to Maroon & Co., Marunico's got all the MSU gear you're looking for. When you're in Starkville, if you need new MSU gear, if you need something for your tailgate, if you need something for your car, if you need to get a great gift idea for the Bulldogs in your life, head to Marunico. Use our promo code THUNDER15. You'll save 15% on any regular priced item. Some exclusions do apply. Before you go to the games this fall, head to Marunico. We go back into the pick'em. Robbie Falk, now two games up on me. After LSU, uh, I would have won my uh, my my money pick them if Ole Miss had won as well. But you know what? Some sacrifices I'm willing to make. I'm not saying that I'm a hero. I'm just saying that I'm a hero. Eh. Okay, then. Uh, is there any ones that we will just agree on? Strangely enough, there is one. We'll both take Vanderbilt to beat Ball State, right? I think we're good. 
What's crazy is, is so we insane. we didn't even mention the Bama uh, Vandy game. We were like, all right, well, I think we'll both take Bama. That that I'd asked you one time, like, has there been a game where we've just completely like there it is. ignored that that one has now jumped into the fray. Yeah. All right. Eleven a.m. at Missouri Auburn off the bye week. Tra- both of these teams coming off. No, sorry, Missouri had UMass this past week. Um, I mean, I really thought Missouri was going to be undefeated playing this game. They're a a five-and-a-half point favorite. They bounced back nicely last week. Auburn got the bye week. This is is a a game that if if Auburn loses it, their season's over. They're done. Missouri loses this game, and I'm not not quite sure what their season holds for them, but they will not be where they want to be. Um, I'll go first. I, I, I think the home team holds. I, Auburn is just not good. They're just not good this year. They may be the second worst team in the conference. State is still the worst team at this time. Um, I'm do gonna think do Miz- we think that Hugh Freeze is going to be successful there? I don't know. The because last year, you know, the whole the whole conversation was, yeah, we just need to recruit. He signed a pretty good class. He signed like all these five star receivers, yeah. and he's got a great class lined up right now. So. I mean, my my thing is, you can usually have some pretty good evidence if if a program is moving in the right direction by what you see on the field, like how hard the players are playing, are they getting better? And with them, it just seems like every week is just the blame game. We're just going to blame players and the media and, and all that. I just I don't know what I don't know what we're going to see from Auburn, but I I feel like this game is going to be another loss for them. So you're taking Missouri? Yeah. All right, so we're both with Missouri here. And that's – I mean, they're about to not make a bowl game again. So – Yeah. Yeah. Auburn – Auburn made a bowl game last year. Did they? Yeah, remember yeah, – remember, That's the one where Freeze was like – But I they had a losing record. Well, yeah, well no, they, 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 they were 6-6. Six and six. No, I mean, after the bowl after, game. But that was the game where – do you remember where he said, we didn't focus too much on game planning because we were recruiting? Yes. That, that was but that, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, they have now had – Three straight losing seasons. This will be number four. I think it's four straight. Harson's first year they were six and six and seven. They were it says six and five. They were in twenty twenty six and five. That that's Malzahn's last year. Uh so that's what I'm saying. This is they've had they had three straight. This will be four. Okay, okay. Well, now we're on the same page. Yeah. Okay. All right. But even if you go back to twenty twenty, that's gonna be five consecutive seasons with six wins or less at Auburn with what they're spending. Yeah. That's crazy, well, I mean, again. Man. I mean, and I used to point this out about Auburn all the time, and people would be like, "Ah, you're wrong." Look at Malzahn's record past his first year, right? So his first year there, they go twelve and two, right? Mm-hmm. Five losses, six losses, five losses, four losses, five losses, four losses, five losses. They were a four loss or worse team every year he was there, and yet there's this belief because they they had that great they had a national championship with literally. The greatest, maybe the, literally the greatest college football player of all time. Cam Newton is in the discussion, right? And the, the 2013 year, they won three games in the final 10 or final 30 seconds of the game. I mean, incredible outliers. They could have just as easily been a, a five loss team that year. Yeah. So it all kind of caught up to them there. And then, yeah, Harson back to back went, what, tw- six and seven, five and seven, three, six and seven. I mean, Robbie, look at their schedule the rest of the way, right? So let's say they lose this game to Missouri, right? Then they're at Kentucky. That's certainly no no picnic. They host Vanderbilt. They will be an underdog in that game. They get ULM. Robbie, ULM is five and one. Yeah, that, and then they go to a, they that, host Texas A and M, and then they got to go to Alabama. They're they're staring three and nine right in the face. Yeah, man. I don't know, man. I and and the 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 natives are already restless. At this point, and yeah. the recruiting class is like I mean, Hugh Freeze is always going to recruit well. Mm-hmm. I just don't think he's. I think he's overrated as a coach. Like I, I'm not seeing it as a coach. Yeah, yeah, he got Ole Miss turned around, but since basically since that 2015 season, he has done nothing. Yeah, I mean he had that at 2013. They, they were, were good. Really 2013, good, then, 2014, 2015. They went to the Sugar Bowl. They were good. Yeah, but yeah, all right. Uh, Oklahoma hosting South Carolina. What an interesting game. Oklahoma is miserably bad offensively. Um, and then South Carolina, 
they've been so close. You know, they, they, they had Alabama on the ropes. They had LSU on the ropes, but they couldn't knock them out. Is this Carolina's chance to get a big win? What do you think? Hmm. Both of these offenses are not great. fairly inept. Yeah. I'm going to give Oklahoma the, the benefit of the doubt. South Carolina keeps finding ways to lose games since that Kentucky game. And I just don't trust Lenore Sellers. Mm-hmm. Um, Oklahoma's offense has been awful. I think they just need to roll with Jackson Arnold. And mm. I, I think that it was a it's an offensive issue, not Jackson Arnold issue. They're missing Levy. They and are Gabriel. and Gabriel. It, the fact that they the fact that they made light of Jeff Levy when he had a top ten offense mm-hmm. was just it was funny. It's hilarious. These these so. these fans at these schools that talk about how bad things are when they're top ten. They w- yeah, and then you just have fans who will believe whatever the school tells them to believe. Basically. And whatever is like whoever's in charge, mm-hmm. whoever gets pushed in the next position, they're better than the last guy. Mm-hmm. There was no way that Seth Luttrell was going to be better than Jeff. No, Levy. I agree. So yeah, I, I'm going to go Oklahoma. Here. I'm going to go Oklahoma. I just like the home team better here. South Carolina's not good enough to win on the road, in my opinion. Mm-mm. Um. Third Saturday in October, number seven Alabama at number eleven Tennessee. Alabama is a two and a half point favorite. Two weeks ago, these two teams were rolling. Then they, you know, both drop a game that they shouldn't have lost, and then last week win a game that they barely won. Somebody's going to get their season going in. The other one's going to be in real, real trouble. I'll pick first here. I said earlier this year that Tennessee would win this game. I think they're going to win this game. Think that being at home is a big, big push for them. Uh, Bama, it, it, I, I don't know what's going to happen with Bama this year, man. They may lose another one too. I don't know. They have to go to Tiger Stadium in a few weeks. I don't mm. know how that's going to go. I'm going with the Volunteers here. I'll take the. I'll take Tennessee. Yeah, I think I'm going to go Tennessee too. <sighs> I know, but I, I thought you. I thought I might get you there. That's a tough place to play. I. I've been really high on Tennessee. I'm, that's starting to slip after their last two games. I. I really feel like what what happened to them at Arkansas has kind of broken them a little bit. Mm-hmm. But this is a chance now to, to get back on track. You win this game, you are still in the hunt for the SEC championship. Yeah, they got yeah, Georgia. No they're going to play Georgia, so that they can win the SEC still. So I, I think this is this is an elimination game for me uh, in the SEC. One of these two yeah, teams agreed. is out. Yeah, I agree. And Alabama has just been awful the last two weeks. Tennessee is a team, if they play like they did the last two weeks, it'll be a boat race. Yeah, I agree. Tennessee, and they get up for this game, they have for the last three or four years. I'm going Vols, so this is going to be their second win and as many chances at uh, at Knoxville All against right. Alabama. All right. Uh, number eight LSU at Arkansas. Possible letdown game. Interesting for, game. Very interesting. Possible, possible letdown game. Arkansas has been better than we thought this year. They can move the football. LSU was better defensively last week, but I think Ole Miss was big reason for that. They just weren't good. Mm-hmm. Um, Arkansas's next three games are very interesting. Right? They are, they host LSU. They come to Mississippi State. They host Ole Miss. There's a great chance they could go two and one. I think you know they'll be favored against Mississippi State. I think they can beat Ole Miss. I don't know if they can beat LSU, though. I'll let you pick first. What do you think about this one? LSU is one of those teams, like, you, you sit there and you, you start counting them out a little bit, and they get a little bit of, uh, I don't know, some some pixie dust sprinkled on them, and then all of a sudden they become a national contender. It happens. I just I feel like LSU has Arkansas's number uh, usually – this is going to be a really good game, I think, but I think LSU finds a way in the end to win this. So there's going to be a time in this game where we're we're sitting there talking about like this is Arkansas has got a good shot here, and yeah. I think LSU's just going to snatch it. Okay, so uh, I'm I'm with you on that. I just can't bring myself to pick the Hogs here. Uh, LSU, I think LSU knows that hey, we control our own destiny for the playoffs. Uh, we got a great chance to play in the SEC championship game. You know, they really only have one game that you would say they have this game. They have Texas A&M. They have Alabama, right? They can drop one of those games and still make the playoff. So I think that they, they probably will drop one of those games, but I don't think it'll be here. Yeah. Kentucky at Florida. Kentucky is a weird team. Mm-hmm. Went over Ole Miss, pulls Georgia all the way to the wire, but then they uh, they drop a, you get blown out by South Carolina. 
They 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 get handled. Vandy dominated that football yeah. game from start to finish. This Florida. Is such a weird team. The news came out today. Graham Mertz out for the season. It's DJ Lagway's team the rest of the way. I think that can end up being a blessing in disguise. Lagway has the higher ceiling. Call me crazy here. I'm going to pick the Gators to win. I'm there too. Oh. I, this is a this is a team that's playing way better football than Kentucky. You're playing defense on me over here. No, I'm I'm really not. Okay. Like I, you know me. Like I'll pick mm-hmm. whatever. Mark Stoops is boring. Yeah. Did he really say this thing that's going around? That has to be a made-up quote, right? What saying about how how you see how what Vanderbilt was able to do in NIL? No, I, I gotta I gotta find out. That's extra. fake. I'll, I'll I'll double check. Mark Stoops is boring. He, they play a really boring brand. Uh, they recruit. It seems like they like they make a breakthrough in recruiting. Like they get some kids that they wouldn't normally get, and you know the defense is always good. But it's it, it's almost like it, it feels like almost every year it's six to eight wins. It's it's like you know Mississippi State with Dan Mullen, and that was great for Mississippi State fans. I'm sure this is great for Kentucky fans, but it's not great for TV. It's not real, not and a, not a real quote. And so they're this week. I think Florida is starting to get a little bit underneath them. I don't know what that means for Billy Napier. Everybody still talks like he's not going to be there next year, so I don't know. But Kentucky got that marquee win against Ole Miss, and since then it's just it's just kind of meh. Yeah. So I don't I don't right, I don't so I don't both, trust them we're at both all. Both taking the Gators. That's crazy. All right, game of the weekend, maybe the game of the year. We've been talking about it for months. Number five, Georgia, at number one, Texas. I'll just say this. I think Texas is the only truly elite team in the SEC. I think Georgia is gettable on the right day. Alabama is gettable on the right day. LSU, A&M, everybody's got a flaw except for Texas. I don't know what Texas's flaw is. They've blown out literally everybody they've played. They went to Michigan. They won big. They beat Mississippi State easily. They beat Oklahoma easily. I'm not saying they're going to win this game easily, but I am saying they're going to win it. Texas wins it. This is a intriguing first, like, Texas super. is a three-and-a-half point favorite, just for the point. This is a like this is the first like super test for Texas in yeah. the SEC. These two teams that, will play each other again, by the way. Oklahoma, that don't count as an SEC. No, test. no, no. Uh, you you know what to expect in that game. This is a different animal. This is one of the SEC beasts. Yeah, what they do at the line of scrimmage, wh- how they play, is SEC football. Yeah, Georgia hasn't been great of late. They they certainly have flaws. But they will test Texas in this game. Mm. They're going to be very physical up front on both sides of the line of scrimmage. They're gonna they're gonna test Texas like they haven't been tested. Mm. So I'm kind of torn on this. With it being at Texas, I'm gonna go Texas. It's it's at Texas. Quinn Ewers is gonna be back a hundred percent, and. I, I'm with you. I just don't see – I haven't seen a ton of flaws with this Texas team. They have been the most dominant of anybody else in the SEC. Everyone else looks like a very beatable team. And until Texas gets beat, they're not in that category. They are, right now, superior to everybody else. So I, I'm going to go with Texas, too, in this. I think that they uh, they win the ball game. Georgia is going to stay in it. But – after what we saw with Georgia at Bama and how they came out in that game, I just don't trust them. So that means that we will be uh, locked in together for one more week, at least. Uh, Robbie will be two games up on me. We all picked the same uh, games. Oh well, I was kind of. I thought for sure you would take Georgia. I thought. I thought I had a couple that you would get differently there. I thought you'd go Alabama. I thought you'd go Georgia. I thought you'd go Kentucky. But well, like I said, I, I will go with what I go with what defense. I do. I know. I go with I go with what I believe. I go I with my gut. I I'm not scared. Okay. I ain't scared of you. All right. Are we doing rumblings tomorrow? Because I know you're traveling. What do you want to do? We can. Um, what is the What is the schedule for the, for that? I will be for those wondering. I will be at SEC Media Days for basketball in Birmingham. I'm going there for two days with the uh, with the men's and the women's. Uh, okay, so. Tuesday, Chris Jans, 940 to 1140. We can go after that. All right, so plan for noon tomorrow Yeah, for us to record. 
And then uh, Wednesday, 10 to 12.25. Go so after that. We could, yeah. Okay. All right. We'll make it happen. We, right, we will. There, there will not be any changes to, to Thunder and Lightning. There will week. be podcasts. It's just do we have time for rumblings might be the question. We should have enough time, I think. All right. We'll figure it out. All right, guys. Talk to you tomorrow. Get the questions in. For Robbie Falk, I'm Brian Ada. Thanks for listening to Thunder and Lightning here on Super Talk Mississippi. Mississippi Media Production.